Hello and welcome or to or welcome back to Life Lessons with Sheila. I'm your typical Jesus loving gal, just sharing wisdom I have learned through the years. I've been a widow of almost two and a half years. I was married for 26 and a half to the love of my life and I'm learning to navigate life without him by my side. Some say I make it look easy, but you don't see me in my private time where I fight every day to continue this journey of life that God so lovingly blessed me with. I know my time is not complete here on this earth, or he would have taken me home two years ago when I coded in the ICU with COVID pneumonia. Some of you may be sick of hearing that story, but it's part of my testimony, so I will continue to share God's grace on me. I am a mother to three amazing adults, a mother in love to one handsome son-in-law, and a gaga to the most precious granddaughter, as well as a fur mom to a cat named Pumpkin and a German Shepherd named Shelby. In my quote-unquote free time, I create content here on YouTube, as well as TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, which you can find links to those in the description box below if you're interested. I'm also a writer, a Christian mindset coach, as well as a motivational speaker. So if your church or women's group is looking for someone to lead them in their next women's retreat or women's gathering, then please get with me. My email is posted at the end card to this video. My calendar is currently open, but it's filling up fast, so book me while you can. Now on with that plug. Today I come before you with a heart full of conviction and a spirit ignited with a burning passion for change. Let us embark on a journey together, a journey towards greater compassion, understanding, and acceptance. This video may come with some conviction and even some flackback, but God has prepared my heart and I know that it's time to set the record straight. In the scripture, Matthew 7, 1-2, it reminds us, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way that you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. These words echo through the ages, urging us to release the burden of judgment and embrace the freedom of love. I wonder how deep this statement really is. Will we be judged in the same way? So does that mean under the same standard? In the same manner? Maybe mocking and laughing at someone publicly, or talking about you to other people in the same way that you talk about others. It is easy to fall into the trap of criticism, to cast stones upon those who differ from us. But as Maya Angelou beautifully said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Let us be mindful of the impact of our words and actions, choosing to uplift rather than tear down. I have been guilty of talking about others in not such a good light, and I have apologized publicly for this many times. I always know when I step out of line when discussing others, because I can feel it in the pit of my stomach. I have struggled with my judgment of others for a good part of my adult life, even inside of the church where it should have been taught that it's not okay. But no, you have ladies groups sitting in circles talking about others who may be sitting in the same room as them. I know, I've done it. I've participated in it, not realizing the damage that could be done. The difference between me and many others is that I read the scripture and felt the weight of judgment which I had on someone else. It was painful and very restricting. It kept me from breathing, from being able to move in my God-given talents and gifts. It kept me small. It kept me from growing and limited my potential. We're all called to be beacons of light and hope, shining brightly in a world often overshadowed by darkness. As the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 5.8, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Let us embrace our role as ambassadors of love, extending grace and acceptance to all who cross our paths. Letting go of the guilt of judgment is so freeing. It's like the weight of the world that I carried around uselessly, wasting time and effort on things that do not matter. Who am I to call someone out for their choices? I'm not one. I'm no one. And neither are you, my friend. I know that may hurt your feelings, but you do not have the right to set them right. It's not your place. You are not God who sits on the throne of judgment. Let us remember the words of Mahatma Gandhi who said, Be the change that you wish to see in the world. Let our lives be a living testament to the transformative power of love and understanding. 
Let us create a ripple effect of positivity, inspiring others to embrace their true selves and live authentically in our presence. In the book of Romans 15, 7, we're reminded, accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Imagine the profound impact we can have when we choose to emulate Christ's boundless acceptance. Our ability to embrace others, flaws and all, not only brings glory to God, but also fosters a community of love and support. Let's draw inspiration from the words of Nelson Mandela, who said, No one is born hating another person because of the color of their skin, or his background, or his religion even. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love, for love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. Let us be agents of love, tearing down the walls of prejudice and intolerance with each act of kindness and understanding. I understand that you may feel someone deserves to be ridiculed publicly, and if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. I can't change that. I can only hope that my words will soften your heart some and get you to see that God has more in store for you than you are receiving because of that wall that you are putting up blocking those blessings from your life. While I understand some people's poor behavior causes others to feel the necessity to call out that poor behavior, but you're only blocking the work that can be done by God. It is like you're building a fence around the said offender to where change can't happen because you basically have shut them in a box, not allowing movement for change to occur. As we navigate this journey, let us cultivate a spirit of human humility. As C.S. Lewis aptly stated, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. When we shift our focus from ourselves to others, we create space for empathy to flourish and judgment to dissipate. In other words, if we were to put as much effort in our own lives and start to clean up our own messes, how much better would our own life be? Finally, let us never underestimate the power of our example. As Albert Schweitzer said, example is not the main thing in influencing others. It's the only thing. Our actions speak volumes, influence those, influencing those around us in ways we may never fully comprehend. Let us strive to be living testimonies of love, acceptance, and grace. Just think if you spend as much time fixing your own life as you do speculating and complaining about someone else, how much better would your life be? How much better would your environment be? How much fuller would your life become? How much impact do you have on others? more than you realize. Do an experiment. Spend the next seven days only posting positive content on your social media outlets and watch what happens. You will draw in more positivity than negativity. It may take longer than a week to notice for some, especially if you're the one who rarely posts positive content. In fact, commit to not posting about anyone else but your own self, your own life for a week and watch what happens. I can tell you the first thing is no one will respond. No one will react. It may feel like you're all alone, but eventually the boat gets turned around and you will soon find people who are seeking out your positive content. The world is hungry for positivity. Why? Because it has been starved out for so long. It got used to being hungry. Hunger pains become normal. Until you start filling up others, you yourself will be hungry. You will want to give up and go back to your old ways, but if you stay at it long enough, you will soon be fed in return. You will become filled with up, up with others, giving you positivity back. Consider the words of Mother Teresa who said, If you judge people, you have no time to love them. Let these words resonate within us, serving as a gentle reminder to prioritize love above all else. When we relinquish the habit of judgment, we create space in our hearts to truly connect with others on a profound level. Reflect on the wisdom of Proverbs 11.25, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. When we choose to be a source of refreshment and encouragement to those around us, we not only uplift their spirits, but also find renewal within ourselves. 
Let us be conduits of positivity, spreading joy and hope wherever we go. Embrace a mindset that encapsulated in the words of Anne Frank, who wrote, How wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Each day presents us with the opportunity to make a difference, no matter how small. Let us seize these moments with courage and conviction, knowing that even the smallest act of kindness has the power to ripple outward and effect a positive change. In the words of Dalai Lama, our prime purpose of this life is to help others. If you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. Let this sentiment guide our interactions with others, prompting us to approach every encounter with kindness, empathy, and understanding. As we continue on this journey of self-discovery and growth, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to becoming less judgmental and more compassionate. Let us become beacons of light, shining brightly in a world that is often shrouded in darkness. Together, let's strive to create a future where love reigns supreme and all are embraced for who they truly are. Thank you for your dedication and joining me on this noble pursuit. May God bless you abundantly and graciously as you become less judgmental in your life. Start asking yourself the questions that you ask others to and hold yourself to the same standards as you hold others up to. I know there are many poorly behaved people out there and I'm not saying to give them a free pass, but ask yourself one question. Do I know this person in real life? And would they impact my life if I didn't know they existed? If you can say no to either one of those questions, the answer is simple. Simply don't expose yourself to their behavior. If you don't know what is going on with strangers, then you have nothing to respond to. If you don't watch people online that you don't like, you have nothing to talk about. If that is the problem, then maybe it's time to dedicate some time finding someone worth talking about. Someone who is making a positive difference in your life. If more people talked about things and people that they liked more than things and people that they do not like, then it's clear and simple. The world would be a much happier, more glorious place to be. I don't know about you, but once I stopped giving attention to the negative things and people in my life, the happier I became. I also don't know about you, but the time is an investment nowadays, an investment that you will get something back from. It's up to you to decide if it's a positive or negative investment. I know today's video was a bit on the heavier side, but I see it all around me. People belittling others who mean absolutely nothing to them, yet it's like they feel they need to talk about them. It just doesn't make sense to the normal mind. Someone who chooses not to focus on the negatives of this world. I just don't get the obsessions. I'd rather be obsessed over watching funny cat videos, Sims 4 building, cooking or baking videos, or even crafting videos. Things I actually enjoy. In fact, if your watch list has become public, would you? what would you do? <laughs> or would you be ashamed? I used to would have been ashamed, but now not anymore. Have a fantastic day. I hope you invest your time wisely today. Remember, you can't get time back and only you can re only retain what you gain during that time spent. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.